All right, for those of you guys that are joining us today, uh, YouTube, you're starting right off the bat with uh, us right from the get-go. The whole idea is to give a football, prehab, bulletproof, get safe uh, program. And so what better day than to talk about leaders help uh, the people in their charge feel safe. I think that's super important. Um, you're gonna see my family probably run through here a few times. And that's cool, it's just how it is. It's kind of the point of the message today. Um, you know, I wanna have a, a safe place for them and, and as I'm in, they're in my charge in that sense as dad. All right, so today really is a, a, a recovery day. If you've been working the last few days, uh, you're probably pretty beat up. I got uh, recovery sleeves on my legs. Uh, I didn't put them on my arm, probably should have. Um, but I'm gonna start, we're just gonna work through all the activators that we've been doing um, so that they're on video, they're on YouTube for people to go back any point in the season and say, here's what I, I wanna start working on um, to get better in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Alright. So I'm gonna start with foot smash. I'm just gonna roll out probably each one of these. Probably gonna do about 30 seconds to 45 seconds for each one of these. But if you find one that you know you want more, uh, hit it. Today is all about recovery and prehab. Uh, feeling good about life. We got Mario speed runs going on in the background because, because playthroughs, playthroughs, not speed runs. Guys speed run this thing in five minutes, it's insane. They're like pixel perfect, it's amazing. But I'm rolling out. Each one right now, I'm just getting my feet, as you guys know, and as I've talked about quite a bit, and having a lot of ankle issues. Um, I ran about five miles this week already in total, and my jogs and the volume starting to beat me down just a little bit. So I haven't been on top of it as much as I would have liked to have been. Again, today is a recovery day. It should not push you. Uh, cardiovascular, think of it kind of like yoga. It should be a, just, you should feel good at the end of the day. And I think that's an important factor. If you're gonna, if you're gonna have other people feel safe around you as a leader, you, your body's gotta be right. If your body's not organized, if you're not feeling good, then, then it makes things tough. Real, so as we, I just did the foot smash. I'm literally standing on a foam roller. It doesn't need to be a foam roller. It can be a baseball, softball, whatever you got. Now I'm working calf smash. On calf smash, I'm actually gonna rise up and I'm gonna find a hot spot. Once I find the hot spot, I'm just gonna get right on top of that thing. And then once I really smash that hot spot out, I'm gonna relax and just see where my ankle's at through all directions of mobility. And then I'm gonna get right back in that smash. And that's, that's kind of the idea is the smash and floss. Smash means that, it's what it sounds like, you're smashing your muscles. When you really find it, you really know. And then floss is that full range of motion that you go through, deepening the stretch, the activation, and then you get right back into that same spot. Smash it again. And get the other side. Honestly, if I was doing this just for myself, I'd probably just work my calves, but I am wanting to work uh, some of the other uh, uh, muscle components today. So again, today, for those of you just joining us, I see some people jumping on. Today's an active recovery day. We're talking about how to, uh, how to be safe, how to make others feel safe around us as leaders, and how to get the body so that we're injury proof as possible. So right now we are just smashing the calf and flossing. What is this doing? Well, first of all, it's helping the, the calves activate. And this is something super good to do before practice um, or before competition. But what this is also doing is for me, one of the huge benefits for this is as you activate, you also increase mobility um, through the surrounding joints. The ankle's all about being mobile. Um, and so you want to mobilize the ankle. How do you mobilize the ankle? Smash the feet, smash the calf, smash the calf. And we'll actually work through some more ankle mobilizations later on today. Uh, ham smash. So you're sitting on something, you sit on a, 
you can set my caps forever. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna find the spot that you need the most, and I'm not gonna talk a lot for this one, and you're gonna squeeze everything into that hamstring. And then you're gonna move through the motion. I am actually gonna sit on the couch, and I guess it's easier to do on the couch. So I'm on my couch, I have something underneath my hamstring, I'm gonna find where it needs the most amount of pressure, and I'm gonna just squeeze everything into that pressure effect. I might grab a tennis ball for this, because where'd it go? I had a tennis ball, get to it. And I'm actually gonna set up a stool for this to give you another view of the way to do this. So you have your tennis ball or whatever, you just find it on your hamstring, you're gonna squeeze everything into that hot spot. And then you can roll your leg through full range of motion. This is the floss and smash. I know it just looks like I'm sitting on a chair, but there's a tennis ball. You can use a softball, you can use a baseball. You can use the foam roller. I find that it has to be a pretty small foam roller for you to actually get much benefit. What are we doing here at the hamstrings? Hamstrings are really important. Hamstring stability uh, is really important for knee safety. And then activation and stretching of the hamstrings is also super important for uh, hamstrings themselves. Um, especially with high performance athletes. If you're a sprinter, these are things that, you know, on a cold day, you can really mess these up. So you wanna make sure that you're doing everything you can now to prehab and prevent any injury. Ounce of prevention, pound of cure. We'll be for that, hit the other side. Tennis ball, again, this is easiest on a stool or a chair, maybe a couch, but you want a lot of pressure, whatever you're gonna do. You're gonna squeeze everything in to that hamstring and you're gonna floss through it. The flossing is really, I, I really like that component to the hamstring part probably the most out of all of them. I definitely feel the most benefit through that. And usually I work three different spots on the hamstring, high, medium, and low. Um, I find that gives me the most benefit for this. These activators, if you do them right, should be a 15 minute daily routine. I would say to start your day off, it's a great thing to do. Um, Boy, if I designed American Education, when we all got back, we would spend an hour of PE time, just doing, 30 minutes, just doing activation type exercises to start a day off. Uh, I'm gonna get the hips down. You can use tennis ball for hips too, especially the front half, I'll show that in a second. But I'm gonna roll the side of my hips. If you've been doing all these, uh, if you've been working through all of the squats and the jumps that we've been doing, you probably are feeling it a little bit and the mobility in the hips. I know a lot of you guys, some of you guys are really, really mobile and, and flexible. This is still really good for that. You need less stretching, probably more of this for the, um, the really flexible guys. And what I'm doing is I'm just going up and down. Now what I want to do is this is the easiest one to get roller on bone. So you want to avoid getting roller on bone. You want to try to get roller on knotted up muscle. And so you might just need to work around, find where in your hips, maybe more in the glute for you, is where you have some tightness and you're just working each side roughly a minute. And we're doing it a minute for this program, but the whole idea today, if you're watching the video, is that I'm just adding to your toolbox of like, hey, my, my hamstrings are tight. Well, did you smash and floss them? Um, hey, my, I'm having bad shin splints. Okay, did you smash and floss both foot and calf? Um, so the, the goal is to add to the toolbox that you have to take care of the body. Um, oh my, I can feel my left hip. My left hip's always tighter. I'm gonna find that out here in a second with pigeon. But I'm really working that left hip. You can use a tennis ball for this too. I think that's good. But again, you really want to avoid roller on bone, if at all possible. That's that's no no bueno. But right there, ooh. Some of you guys have, and then the, the around the side you have the IT band that runs through the hip. 
and that usually gets irritated. A lot of this is old people stuff too. I know that kind of silly. Take this into your life because especially with the hips, you gotta keep those mobile. Those will be the first to go. A lot of you guys are like, oh, this is easy. Doesn't, there's nothing happening. Man, put, just keep doing this. It will pay off. Your life will be better. Okay, uh, I'm working upper back and shoulder now. Um, like, I like to find the meat, not the spine. So you wanna stay off the spine, if at all possible, and get right into the actual muscle around the shoulder blade. You can work tall like this and get it into the neck, and that's good. Again, what are you using? Uh, a ball, a roller, a rolling pin? I mean, the, the options of what you can use here are pretty unlimited. For those, of you, for those of you joining us and for the first time maybe today, and you're like, I want the hardcore workout, go back on YouTube and yesterday's is really hard. So you watch yesterday's YouTube and that'll get you. Today is about feeling good. At, at 10 o'clock today, you all should be on top of the world. Just like, oh yeah, the body feels great. I know my shoulders are really tight, especially my right one. And it is 15 minutes of activation uh, is the difference between, well, a lot. Injury, not injured. So we have another four minutes here of activation before we hit the warm. We will do a warm up still, same warm up as we've been doing. So we do want to get the body hot and actually what we're going to do is we're going to hold off on pigeon and rear foot elevated till uh, the warm up. I want to get the body a little hotter for pigeon and rear foot elevated. Now what we're, like I said, we're spending a whole hour today on showing you guys ways to be for prehab and safety. That's not a normal thing. This is something that normally you're gonna pick and choose out of this whole routine today. Uh, 15 minutes worth of activity, and you'll do that from nine to nine fifteen each day. So, but today we give we do it all. We hit everything. We'll do a little bit of hip strengthening. You guys, I saw Coach Fleming jumped on. You asked Coach Fleming at some point. You know he's gone through. ACL injury, that's, that's, it sucks. It's not, it's not enjoyable. Um, we've had players, we, 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 I will say this, knock on wood, it's been since 2013, since we've had an ACL that's kept somebody out of the season at the varsity level. So that's, that's a pretty good deal. And just kind of rolling through the back. We have another two minutes here, or three minutes. I'm actually gonna roll through my lower back again. It feels really good if you have a, a bigger roller. If you have a smaller roller, I'd recommend not rolling through the lower back a whole lot, unless you just can absolutely make sure that you're not just gonna put all that pressure on the spine. Going through here, I can really get pressure into the muscles surrounding the spine without actually just crushing the spine. You're not gonna hurt yourself, but it won't feel comfortable. There's not a lot of benefit. Mario's killing it. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I'm gonna get my arms to finish off um, for the triceps. It's just kind of sorry, sorry. It's just kind of like you're you're doing a arm wrestling tournament. If I'm, a, if I'm a quarterback, baseball pitcher, track thrower, my arm is part of the deal. I really, really want to activate and lengthen and loosen uh, muscles, or lengthen. And the reason I want that is um, because the tighter your muscles are, you might be strong, but you also are at critical risk for injury of tendons. One of the reasons I tore my uh, elbow, part of it's throwing motion, part of it's uh, overuse for sure. But a lot of it was because my lifts and my routine I was not taking care of the muscles in my arms. They were just tight and I was probably adding a lot of, I was trying to add volume without 
maintaining the mobility. And so here I am, a Tommy John survivor. I mentioned that once at workout, I think. But it's because I didn't do this, to be honest. So if I throw anything, disc, shot, even though the arms aren't really part of that, that's a body movement to some degree, because the arm's connected to it, you gotta really take care of it. Also, it's kind of funny, if you use a foam roller, you'll get these weird little lines and things from your roller. People will be like, what's that? Got another minute here before we hit the warm up. At 10, I'll open up the lines too, if you guys got any questions. I'll let you guys unmute yourself and ask. Have it closed off right now because we're recording everything for the YouTube today. Anyway, if you don't want to get hurt playing football or whatever sport you're doing, or just in life, this routine's the one you want to do. All right, let's go ahead and get warmed up a little bit. Let's get a little bit of sweat going. We're not trying to get too intense. We got butt kicks in place. We're doing every other step. Count it, watch your head. I'm inside, I'm in a new environment. I gotta check my areas. And go. I'm doing everything barefoot today. Frankenstein's. Get those hammies just starting to heat them up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ace skips. Still quick and explosive, nothing changed here. Inchworms, great one for today. Big and tall to the ground, crawl it out. To the end of a mat or whatever distance you have, and then walk the feet up. I know I have a light up there, so I'll be careful on my way up. Take your time, not a race. Starting to get the body ready for movement. A great day of movement today. This will probably be longer a little bit than a normal Wednesday because the goal is to give all the tools or many tools so you guys can fix what you need to fix, work on, prehab what you need to prehab. All right, lunge step twist. We are only gonna do four of these today. And actually, let's do a twist back today. Let's mix it up a little bit. So I'm gonna lunge, I'm gonna twist the heel that's down, and I'm back up. Lunge, touch, back. One. So this time we're actually twisting down at a 45 degree angle. You can do your hands above you. I just about did. I just about knocked my light down. One more of these. Really reach back, try to grab that heel. You may or may not get there. I can't get there. And I'm strong, sweet. Lateral lunges, my favorite. I always talk about cleats in the ground. Every cleat should be in the ground. My heel should not be up, my toes shouldn't be up. And I step over the log. And we got four of these today. Two. 
I really see this time such an opportunity. I never spent this type of time perfecting movement patterns and working really being safe. So people that are gonna do this are gonna find a great deal of good stuff. Uh, no body weight RDL. Skip, uh, do good mornings instead. So hands behind the head. Knees lock at 15 degrees. Hinge at the hips. Core is tight. Push through the ground to stand up. Push through the ground to unhinge. Two. Three. Four. Not a race, it's an activator. Seven. Eight. It's faster on the way up than it is on the way down. Nine. Ten. Sweet. Air squat hold, just a minute of this for right now. Probably come back to this. And down. We're actually gonna come back to some air squats and I'll explain why. We're gonna work some goblet squat stuff. If you have an object with weight, you can use it. Otherwise, air is fine for this. I love doing this barefoot because you get to really see what parts of your foot, where the ankle mobility needs help when your foot starts to raise up off the ground. Fifteen seconds. And if you can hold this just fine, start working into a hip. Work one hip to the other hip. That's the next thing. Three, two, one. So we're actually gonna go back one slide and hit pigeon and rear foot elevated for pigeon. We want to get the front of the leg as parallel to the front edge of a mat or whatever you're working with. There'll be some natural bend back, but you want to try to get that. And then you can go ahead and bend, go over the top here. We're going to be in here for 30 seconds today. If this is something you want to work more, if this is hip mobility, um, work it longer. Uh, we're just going to spend 30 seconds here today. You can go all the way ahead to the ground, go hands out in front. And now you're slowly out of it. Very, very, very slowly out of it. Unwind. And let's get the other leg for 30 seconds. Do whatever you gotta do to manipulate that leg. What you don't want is the leg straight back like that. You wanna really work to get that leg parallel as much as possible. Maybe you can't get it that parallel. Work to get it as parallel as you can. And then just kind of breathe into the stretch. This is active. On exhale, get deep into that stretch. Breathe deep. Relax into the stretch. If you've been doing the work, you're sore, you're tight. And today should just get you fired up for the next two days of working. And then slowly out of that. Beautiful. Uh, rear foot elevated. Really great one for the quad, the front half of the leg. Also known as the couch stretch. Okay. Now the key to the couch stretch is getting that leg up and back. It's kind of tough to see. It's a bad angle probably. Um, you don't want to lean back. You want to keep your upper body directly straight up and down. Like there's a rod going through from top to bottom. Again, 30 seconds. Don't be leaning back. If anything, tilt forward, but we don't want a lot of forward tilt. I just say if anything, because what we really don't want is leaning back. 
We want to be straight up and down if at all possible. You can squeeze and contract the quad along with your breath. And get deeper into the stretch, taking a great job just attacking this whole front portion of the leg, not just the quad. Everything front leg dominant here. Let's go ahead and flip it. Couch stretch other side. I'm a big fan of the couch stretch. Cool thing about all these mobilizers and activators is that you really don't need to work out to do them. How many times have you been sitting there watching a movie or something in your living room? Just grab a foam roller. Lay out, knock out the shoulders, knock out the quad, whatever it happens to be. One more deep breath here. Good job. All right. Good job getting activated. Let's get back into our mobility. All right, so we worked on this last week. Why is ankle mobility so important? We don't want to have ankle sprains. That'll take us out for the year. Um, hold on a second. We got to reset Mario. He already beat with anything. It's pretty impressive. All right. There we go. Um, so we want to make sure that our ankles are mobile for ankle injury. But even more importantly, importantly, that, that's the most important. Also, for squats, if you want to get good at squats, you have to have ankle mobility. So what you want to do is you want to go. Uh, thumb and fist away from a wall. I'm just gonna use the roller so you can see it. And you wanna see, can you touch the wall, thumb and fist away? So we're just doing a test really quick here. Without your heel, without your heel coming off the ground. And I cannot. I'm better than I was last week, but I'm not there yet. I'm gonna test the other, test the other side. Thumb, fist to wall. Can I touch? Ankle mobility is gonna protect our knees, it's gonna protect our hips. It's all connected. It's gonna protect the ankles, obviously, themselves. The Achilles, and I'm closer. For whatever reason, my left hip is tighter than my left ankle is looser. All right, so what do we do? Let's work a joint mobilization. So, we're not stretching. This is actual mobilization. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna kinda of do what we just did. We don't need the wall. We're gonna go over the top, hold for one, two, three, then up. And we're just gonna work this one, two, three, up. And we're gonna do this 20 times each leg. If you are somebody that struggles from shin splints, if you've, if you've had ankle problems in the past, I know we've had guys that this is an injury that still haunts us. We've had uh, sprains, uh, and, and sometimes you roll it, and that's, that's understandable, but if you're immobile, you won't survive many ankle rolls. It could, it could put you out, high ankle sprain can put you out the whole season. You can apply some force down. If you had a band, you can tie a band off and pull the band, have the band be pulling your ankle backwards. But if you don't have all that stuff, this by itself is, is gonna be pretty good for you. The key is heel's gotta stay on the ground. Heel has to stay on the ground. Don't let the heel. You'll notice some movement in your hip too. It's all connected. Might get some hip mobility, loosen it up. Holding it for no more than three seconds each time. Stretching. Uh, stretching is fantastic. It does not help with performance on the day of performance. So I'm not a big stretch guy, day of performance. I'm a big move. This is fine. Absolutely activating three seconds of, of movement and of, of constriction, holding, isometric. That's fine. I'm gonna flip it and hit the left leg now. Why are we doing this? No ankle sprains and get better at our squats. And if you have shin splints, this will help. I've had shin splints my whole life. So if it sounds like I'm kind of OCD about that specific hurt, yeah, it's because it sucks. It was derail you. You don't have to, but what really helps for recovery on active recovery days like today our recovery compression socks or sleeves. I got a sleeve on today. I have the socks for when I run. But I like for recovery, I like my foot to have more mobility than a, than a recovery sock provides. 
And that's why I prefer recovery sleeves on the legs. Um, and they're really good, like after the workout, keep these bad guys on for six, 12 hours. They really help. Helps reduce swelling. There's some other quasi science that says they work. There's some science that says they don't do anything at all, but choose what you want to believe. All right, sweet. Um, now I'm going to show you another one now. Um, we're going to go in performance mode, but if you're a stretch guy, maybe you need longer than 10. If you ever stretch for more than 10 seconds, you are now not helping your performance on the day. So what we're going to do today is I'm just going to go up on a stool, a chair, a couch. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do the same thing. This time I'm going to pull my chest and I'm going to hold for 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, one, good. I think that's fine to do on game day. If I was over 10 seconds, I'd say no, that's not good. You start to lose performance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sweet. Let's bench chest. I put that in there twice. Goblet squat hold, four to five seconds each. So what we're gonna do with goblet squat hold, if you have an object that's got some weight to it, uh, you're gonna hold it out in front. And when you get down, you're gonna go over top of that leg with that weight. Here we go, I got, I got Arlo's horse. It's pretty light, but you can get the idea. Okay, so I'm gonna go into my air squat and I'm just gonna work over top of that leg, making sure my full foot's in there for five, four, three, Two, one, 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 last set, five, four. Three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one. That's a phenomenal series to go through for ankle mobility. Throughout this whole thing, grab water when you need it. Hips. So hips are a huge deal. Um, hips are the power plant, but they also gotta be mobile. So power and mobility in the hips. Unlike the ankle, which is just mobility, the knee, which needs to be stabilized, hips, you can do both. Uh, fire hydrants. So, good tabletop position. Let's go out to the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. All right, flip it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Working both hip mobility and strength here. Next with the karate kick. You'll probably sweat a little bit for this. This will be challenging. This is kind of the hard part, I guess, of the day, if you will. All right, here we go. Lift, kick. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three. Turn it around. Put Garcia in the house. Here we go. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, If you haven't been doing a lot of this, you're gonna maybe even feel a little crampy. That's fine, that's fine. Fire into the circle and come up through. You're gonna go out, around, up through. So look something like this. 10 of these guys. Up, one, two, three, all the way to the elbow, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eight. This is actually increasing speed as well. Because if you've been paying attention through the course, you found that raising your knee higher above your hip and that knee drive is how we increase speed. This is helping with all that. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now for a little core leg lifts. We're gonna go on our back. We're gonna lift our feet to the sky. 10 of these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's nice little hammer the core there for a second. Shoulders round one. All right. If you have a towel or a pillow or a ball, you can use it for this. If you have lightweight dumbbells, you can use it for this. Uh, we're gonna go 10 each side, but we're just gonna work external rotation. I'm gonna use a ball first, see how that works. Okay, and all I'm doing here is I wanna try to get my arm perfectly 90 degrees. So one, three, four, five, really work that, a ball or like I said, a towel, six, seven, eight, nine. If you have some light weights, a book, books are fantastic for this. Um, I'll do one without a book and then I'll have weight next round. Again, the ball or the towel or whatever it is goes between your arm and your body so that your arm can be, your elbow can be kind of parallel across the ground. You don't want your arm sagging. You want your elbow up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. You can do these standing by like doing them on the ground. It gives you some re resistance scat push-ups. We've done a bunch of these. Depress in, push shoulder blades up. One, two, arms don't bend. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're really trying to crush the can. Wall angels. If you got a wall, I have a curtain. We're gonna go up and over. You don't even need this. The wall helps give yourself guidance on is my arm touching the wall the whole time? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Touchdowns. All right. So we're gonna go out. Pull back, 
rotate up, touchdown. That's one. You have 10 of these guys. Two. Three. Four. Building bulletproof shoulders. Five. Six. Try not to let your body lean back. Oh, I knew I was gonna do it. Seven. <laughs> Eight. Try to keep your upper body tight. Nine. Ten. What we want to avoid is this. We don't want that, that pullback. All right, round two. Taking care of the shoulders is so important um, to make sure that we can make through a season. It is the primary part of contact in football. If you're a baseball player, obviously it's needed. Wrestling, your shoulders get jacked. I was gonna add a book. It's out of book. Here's a random book my wife has. Don't know anything about it. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. Like I said, my family might be joining me at some point today, and that's awesome. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I'm a receiver, this is helping me catch more passes because I can move my arms uh, through. All the ranges of motion. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wall Angel. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Touchdowns. Make sure that we don't get that lean back. One, two, there's my boy. Three, got the family about to show up here any minute. Four. Five. There she is. Wanna do it with me? Six. Wanna do this with me? Oh. Hashtag respond. Seven. Eight. Nine. Right here. Ten. All right. Touchdown. Sideline rotation. There she goes. She's more than welcome to come join me. She's over here eating a cupcake though. It's not, it's not part of the workout plan. Eating the cupcake. Hey Ryan, you wanna sit, there you go. She's just hanging out. What? This is great. I love it, bro. Oops, sorry, baby. See, you're just eating the cupcake right in front of dad while he works out, cool. It's a good test thing, I guess. Four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. My big thing today, the message is leaders make others around them feel safe so that they can achieve their best. Obviously, I don't want Rowan to be her very best or whatever she's gonna be, whether it's a cupcake eater or something else. Is that a good cupcake? Ten. Yeah? Not very good today. Three, four. Five, woo, losing the ball. Towel's easier than a ball, because the ball tries to slip out from you. Six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. Scat push-ups on round three, by the way. I didn't flip that over. Let's go this way, bro. Bro, come this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sweet. Wall angels. Round three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Touchdowns. Woo! Feeling good. Hey, Mom, I want to One, fix them. Two. Now. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, whoa, I messed that one up, eight, nine, That's a really beautiful one. Ooh, baby. If you're doing that, you are feeling that. Round four, last one. I'm actually gonna add a real towel or a pillow. Here's a pillow. My wife loves snow pillows. So I have plenty of these bad boys. I should try to increase weight. I don't know if I need a heavier book or what, but that book's not very heavy. Water bottle. Perfect. Here we go. Perfect. One, two, three. A water bottle and a pillow. Most of you should have something like that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. You want know to work out on your own? Ten, you don't? Okay. This book good? I use it as a weight. All right, here we go. Last side lying rotation. One. It takes a little bit longer to hit the shoulders because you're really gonna want to work them independently. And so it takes this not super cool looking, uh, lack of a better term, not sexy movements. But this type of stuff is going to make you bulletproof in the upper half and with as much contact as we put in um, with football I find it to be necessary. Scat push-ups, 10 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Love me some scat push-ups. Wall angels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. My son is looking at me like I'm crazy. I might be. All right, last one. Last touchdowns. These are these touchdowns are kind of hard. I like these. Here we go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The Oregon strength, uh, strength condition coach. He swears by uh, these. The next one is, uh, they do these once every day. We're gonna do this five times each other. This is gonna be now you're gonna actually apply some force to your own neck. So, um, I got you, baby. You're gonna actually supply, uh-oh. 
We're dropping things, guys. Fumble. I'm my hand. I'm gonna put it right there for you. You're gonna apply some force to your neck, so you gotta be careful with this one, okay? So you're gonna go hand to side, and you're just gonna give five, four, three, two, one, other side. Five, four, three, two, one. You're pressing into your hand. Five, four, three, two, one. It's a press, not a pull. Five, four, three, two, one. You're supplying resistance. Five, four, three, two, one. We did not spend nearly enough time on this. Five, four, three, two, one. It looks kind of crazy, but it's so important. Five, four, three, two, one. Last set. Five, four, Get the three, pink one. two, one. All right. The next one we're gonna do is rotation. Ah, uh, okay. And we're just gonna go left and right. We're gonna go all the way over. Go, you can go up and over like this, or you can just go straight across. We're just working full rotations. Five, that's three for me. Four. I know you all tuned into YouTube to see me turn my neck. And then the last one, we're actually gonna skip the last one because we already did it. This one's very much like the side, but now our hands on the back of the head and we're just pushing up. One, two, three, four, five, release. 10 of them. One, two, three, four, five, release. Pushing into the hands, not pulling your head down. One, two, three, four, five, Three. One, two, three, four, five, four. One, two, three, four, five, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, seven. One, two, three, four, Five, eight. One, two, three, four, five, nine. One, two, three, four, five, ten. Your neck has been attacked. So uh, the rest of the day is on you. Um, but we've just given ankle mobility. We've talked about hamstring mobility. Both these mobilities are going to help protect the knee. Um, hip mobility sorry hip ankles the ability for them to be mobile to protect the knee we work the shoulders and the neck as the shoulders are a commonly injured uh area in football because we strike with them and because of the amount of force in football we took care of the neck the most important thing that you guys can get out of all of this today is that when you are in a good position physically it helps you Make others feel safe. It's not mandatory. It's not the. It's not the requisite. But I would say that for for athletes um, that are out there working really hard, I feel safe if I'm a quarterback, say, and my line is working hard. I feel safe uh, if I'm a running back, and I know that those receivers have been practicing blocking out on the edge for the screen game. Um, that's a skill. But this stuff here keeps you on the field. So if I know the best guy to keep me safe is physically capable and he's been doing this whole prehab routine, um, that makes me feel safe. But this transfers in our life as well. You can be relied on and counted on when um, everything goes wrong because you've been physically working this. You, you've gone through adversity on a daily basis. That's why I like physical workout is it gives you that adversity. And I am, I have a lot to learn still every single day. Um, but I, I encourage you guys to take this routine, make it part of your 15 minute pre, pre warm up, whatever we, it is, add what you need to do, and then go out there uh, and help others feel safe around you um, so that you can truly be a leader. Um, all right, that's all I got today. I uh, love you all. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, buy YouTube.